divine divorce. Should I leave my husband? Keep watching as I go over my story time and practical tips that you can take to apply to your relationship on whether to move forward with love or stay with love. Let's get to it. Bonjour, welcome to La Clinique Moliere, where we increase awareness and improve the quality of living. I'm Rachel. I'm a family nurse practitioner. I'm also a certified nurse midwife, and on this channel, we talk about mindful living, self-development, and woman's health. So this story time is, you know, very near and dear to me. It's um, whenever I share a story, it's gonna be real authentic, transparent. Uh, I wanna be able to share my story and hopes to help someone else. And uh, so that's what you can always expect from my story time. And this particular story time is happening in real time. So it's raw, it's uncut, um, and I want to let you guys in. Thank you to all of my new subscribers and my active subscribers. I'm really grateful for you. Thank you for following me. You know I didn't post last Thursday because, again, this story time is happening in real time. Um, but thank you so much. We'll be back to regular programming this week. So thank you for your patience, and I'm so happy to serve. This video is gonna be like raw and uncut, um, hence the robe before my shift tonight, and lotus pose that you can't really see. <laughs> I, I'm at a crossroads with my marriage and where I wanna be and you know what I want, how I wanna feel for the next chapter of my life on planet Earth. <laughs> and uh, so I wanted to share you know, some ways that I manage and some practical tips that I use when it comes to relationships and marriages, you name it, friendships, and how to either move forward with love or how to stay with love. Stay with love, get it? <laughs> I'm sure we've all been there before where we are like wondering, should we be in a relationship? Have we outgrown it? Is, does the benefit outweigh the risk, as we say in medicine and healthcare? You know, does this relationship, does the benefits outweigh the risk? You know, you gotta ask yourself. <laughs> I've really grown along the years uh, for the effectiveness of my approach, and I found it to be really helpful. So I hope to help someone else in their journey as they decide um, what to do next with their relationship and how to listen within. I'm a firm believer that, you know, we have free will, right? We have free will. You get to decide what you want to do. You get to, <laughs> you have instructions, but you get to decide what you want to do. And with your free will, you can choose a partner without consulting <laughs> your higher self or without consulting God, without, you know, going within and really listening to your heart and not ignoring those red flags you were given and not ignoring your spirit or not even tapping in to your guidance system, yeah. So you have free will to decide what you wanna do and then whatever you get is what you get. You know, that's how I like to look at it. So first acknowledging that I made this decision, I had free will, so I don't wanna blame the devil, I don't wanna blame God, I don't wanna give my power away because when you go to blaming, that's when you give your power away. So if you, if someone else is the cause, then you can't be the solution and all the answers are within. The empowerment of taking accountability is huge, okay? So I, <laughs> I'm responsible for this and I can also resolve this. I think the next important thing is to decide. You know, we always say, hey girl, you know, hey, I, sounds nice, oh yeah, what is yours doing and how's your relationship going? But did you decide what you wanted? You know, you have to decide. In order to decide that you want better, you have to feel worthy of better. So that has to come from within. So self-love, self-care, you're gonna have to pour into self more. You know, oftentimes we, put everybody else first. We have to put our job first, kids first, our relationships, and we forget about self-care. <laughs> we attract, you know, who we are. So life is just a mirror 
of what you're putting out. So what you're radiating, the energy you're radiating. So even if you were radiating low, whether you were mourning loss or whether you never took time to heal from your past and you move forward too quickly, even if you did that, it's still a, a reflection of who you are or who you were then. So that's why I'm saying that acknowledgement of where you were, the accountability, and then the, the acknowledgement of where I am today. So you, it's okay to advance. It's okay to outgrow your partner. It's okay to love yourself more than you did last year. And now you're deciding to have higher standards. You're deciding that you want more and you feel it now because you are more worthy. You love self more and there's more self-care. I've also never felt more clear about my instruction or direction or clarity until I've lovingly released the past. And if you watch my other videos, we talk about some, you know, practical exercises that you can take to lovingly release the past. So you're going to want to heal from the past. And there's a lot of things subconsciously, even growing up as, you know, in your environment, socially, you name it, that you have adopted or conditioned that you're not even aware you're doing and you're taking that into other relationships or you're, you know, or not healing from previous hurts that you are aware of. So it's important to lovingly release the past and forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for the past, okay? Be so kind and gentle. On this channel, we always talk about being kind and gentle with self. It's the key. So pet yourself, okay? Get in the habit of just petting yourself, you know? All is well with me. I am in good hands. <laughs> so just forgiving yourself, forgiving the past, and forgiving the present moment. So whether in the relationship you're the wrong, you know, you're at fault, or if you are you committed something then you want to forgive yourself okay and it's almost immediate okay it should be almost immediate because that's how kind you are to yourself you're like i'm way more forgiving these days <laughs> because the present moment is creating the next moment so you want to definitely be kinder and gentler and nothing's more important than how you feel i always tell my husband that i was i always say you know nothing's more important than how i feel it's not like you know, selfish, because I also tell him to say it out loud. I'm like, verbalize with me. And I have him say, nothing's more important than how I feel. So he says it and I say it too. So we're accountable for how we feel. I also like to tell him that, you know, hey, you're not the source of my happiness. You know, you have to remember that your spouse is not the source of your happiness, your significant other, whoever you're dating, you're you are the source. God is the source of your happiness, your inner being, your that joy. Nobody can feel it. So your spouse or significant other is not the source of your happiness. And so I always say, you know, you're not the source of my happiness, so <laughs> I'll be sure to take care of that. But don't chip away at my happy, you know. So that's another thing you can evaluate is, you know, after being whole and complete and providing and sourcing your happiness and joy from above from intention right because you set your daily intentions when you do that if your significant other or spouse is chipping away at that happy then it may be time to evaluate where you want to be where you're going you also have to consider forgiving your spouse for whatever the hurt that they caused you as well so you're forgiving yourself and you're forgiving your spouse, okay? So it's so important. Whether you're staying or you're leaving, you're gonna have to forgive yourself and forgive the spouse. You have to, you're gonna have to. So just do it, okay? It's a it's an easy forgiveness exercise, and I'll post the link on the description box below and even up in the screen at the end. Some of it's just emotional hurt or just not being emotionally available. Some of it is they, you know, finances, you name it, or infidelity, I don't know. There's so many different reasons, but you're gonna have to lovingly forgive your spouse whether you're staying or going. I really don't think, you know, marriage is hard. I really don't. I think if each partner comes into the relationship whole and complete and aware of their power, you know, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, you know, so if we're aware of our power that we've been given, then together we're a powerful force and we can 
you know, manage life circumstances when it does happen. But I think each partner will have to be aware of their completeness, though. You can't, there can't be fractions of a partner in a relationship. So that's very important as well. You need to, you want to be whole yourself so that you can attract someone else who's aware of their wholeness. I think with the self-love as well and that self-care we talked about, I think that comes with raising the bar, raising the standard. So once you decide how you want to feel, how do you want to feel? (laughs) When you decide how you want to feel, then if you're getting subpar, you know, at home or if you're not getting that feeling, you know, of course, if you're radiating and you're not getting that in return, so it's not if it's not being reciprocated, then you are going to evaluate, you know, where you want to be. So, again, I think it takes that leveling up and increasing your standards. And, again, it's okay to, to not have had any standards last year or when your partner met you and to be this leveled up brand new you that has high standards and that is requesting, you know, improvement, whether it is, you know, love, emotional expressions, whether it's, you know, fidelity, you name it. Um, So just deciding and increasing those standards. So I always found when I was done and at my wits end (laughs) and I was, done and I was surrendered and I surrendered all and I was on my face okay that's when that's when I always felt like I got all the answers and I was least resistant and I went downstream and that's when things naturally flowed into my experience with the least resistance because I am not trying to figure it out anymore I'm done I'm done I'm like I throw in the towel I'm done you figure this out, God. (laughs) Don't you find whenever you're like, I'm done, I don't know where it's coming from, on my face, I'm done. (laughs) And that's when you're like, oh, (laughs) you get a call or you get the next day you get a letter or you get someone say, oh, here, I have this for you, you know, uh, here's a solution to whatever you're asking for when you're usually done. And so I use the same concept when it comes to relationships and love as well as like, when you're done trying to figure it out and trying to fight it with words, fight it with the flesh, fight it with ego, fight it with everything else that comes under ego, right? That's when spirit's like, and you're going downstream, that's when spirit's like, okay, let me take care of this for her. She's done. It's you deciding. So decide today that I'm done. Being done doesn't mean you have to go anywhere. Being done, you can go to the stillness with being done. Just sitting still writing down how you want to feel, writing down the characteristics or traits that you want in a loving partner, writing down what you deserve, writing down what you're worthy of, visualizing that, getting in the feeling of how you want to feel, what you deserve. So you have to just decide. So being done is like, oh yeah, now I realize my worth. Now I'm throwing in the towel. I'm done fighting with the flesh and now I'm going to the stillness. So when I say I'm done, (laughs) it really means I've decided. Okay, yeah, I've decided what I'm worth. I've decided what I deserve. I decided this is how I'm going to feel. I decided this is what I'm going to, you know, how I'm going to allow you to treat me. So here are some practical tips that I like to use and how I have absolutely changed my trajectory of my relationships and my current one as well as I had to become what I wanted my husband to be so I had to become that so that took over the course of the years you know again increasing my worthiness increasing my awareness you know being more in tune with myself more in tune with my heart my my intuition how I want to feel so that is really important okay so radiating the love that you want to attract so you have to become love around the clock (laughs) and that's how you're going to attract it so being what you want to exuding what you want to attract 
and you're like, okay, Rachel, what does that mean? How am I supposed to do that? <laughs> right. So I like to do affirmations in the morning. Just make it a habit. Do it daily. This is daily work, by the way, as well. So this is not, you see people and they're glowing and they glow up. It's not, it didn't happen overnight. It's daily work, intentional work. <laughs> and that's how we got here. So decide that it's important for you and decide what's important for you and make it a daily practice to set intentions for the day and of how you're gonna feel. So I like to do affirmations of love as well. So I would say I'm radiating love. I am love. I'm attracting love. Love is radiating to me. I am one with perfect love. So affirmations like that in the morning to start the day and you could even do them throughout the day as well. You can journal so that you're in touch with how you're feeling for the day. And then you can just set an intention to change how you're feeling if it's not a positive feeling or if it's not how you wanna feel. Cause you don't want, if you wanna set the day or the tone or the intention for how you wanna feel throughout the day. So journaling, writing down how you're feeling, scripting, writing down, you know, just praising in advance. I, I call scripting just kind of praising in advance. So you're, I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm in a loving, kind relationship that does this, this, and this, especially if you're in a relationship where you're like, I don't know which way to go. Should I stay? Should I leave? And so you have to just become love. So what I would do is a 21 days of love where I am affirming and radiating love around the clock for 21 days. So I'm intentional with it and I'm aware of how I'm feeling. I'm aware of my powerful words because there's life and death in the tongue. I'm aware of what I'm radiating. So I'm radiating love to all beings um, and everywhere I go. So that includes your affirmations. That includes journaling that includes your scripting so you want to radiate love you could even do meditations on love there's meditations on youtube that are for 21 days of love where you're just more cognizant and have you know affirmations of love so do meditation do prayers so read your scriptures on love just everything love <laughs> everything love <laughs> so 21 days of that try it okay if you're trying to decide whether you should stay or go do 21 days of love. And in my experience, what I found, and I know it seems like it could be the wildest request from God, but there's no wild requests from God. So you radiating for 21 days with the intention that you know that what you are radiating, you're attracting. So <laughs> in turn, your partner will either match up to the standards that you put out or that you're radiating because you're on that frequency or your partner will be ejected. And I'm not kidding you, this really works. So just give it a try. I'm telling you this works. Uh, it worked for me <laughs> and it's mind blowing. It's a game changer to become what you want to attract or to become what you want from your significant other. It's amazing, try it. So to bring that home, no more words, <laughs> no more fighting with the flesh, no more words, no more arguments. Decide, get a planner, get a calendar out 21 days and handle and manage your significant other in the spirit. And I'm telling you, it's more powerful than you ever, than any other approach you could ever take. Okay, so starting today, no more fighting it with the flesh, with the ego, no more. Go to the spirit with this one. Do your 21 days of love, radiate high, all love, okay? Just all love, exude love, be love, radiate love, feel love. <laughs> and I promise you, your significant other will have to match that love you're attracting or they will be ejected and it won't even, it would be this miraculous event that the, your significant other is just gently ejected out. So remember that his ways are past our ways and higher than our ways and past our finding so out. So that is what I've done um, in my marriage right now and that's what has worked for me. And um, I just want you to know that it can work for you too and that it's so powerful. Leave comments below if you have done this before, if you're gonna try it. 
Um, if you're at your wit's end, what's going on? I want to hear from you. Let's chat. That was my story time. Thank you so much for watching my story time. We are back to normal programming this week. So feel free to tune in every Mondays and Thursdays. We have new videos for you. Uh, comment below. Just engage me. Ask me questions. If there's any topics you want to talk about, we are an open book. Also, be sure to like, share, subscribe, turn on the notification so that you don't miss another video. Thank you for watching. Merci. See you next time. Bye.